was you? How the heck did you get in here? I followed Danton here, then I hacked her control panel. I told you before I had computer skills. Your secret sleuth? Yes, and that crime scheme website. What? No, that can't be. That isn't like you. Oh, really? And just what do you know about me, Danton? Do you even know my last name? Don't look at me. I know your last name. It's Mamie Sterry. I thought you were different, Danton, but you're just like all the other kids. In my old school, for the longest time, I was a nobody. I was just a generic nice girl to everyone. I was shy, so I didn't have many friends. I'm good with computers, and I'm smart, but that didn't matter to people. That was until the day I discovered our principal was stealing school funds. Most of the students and faculty hated him, so they were glad to see him go. And I became a hero. After that, everyone would come to me for help in finding stuff or catching thieves, all kinds of detective stuff. It was great. Soon, I became known as Mimi Mystery. You didn't actually tell people to call you that, did you? Yes. Why? You need help. But after a while, people stopped coming to me. It was bound to happen, I suppose. I lived in a small town. Not many exciting cases pop up in a place like that. And I got scared I'd become a nobody again. But I figured that there were still bad people out there who wanted to do bad things. I just had to fish them out. So you came up with the idea for your scheme website. It was so simple. People who wanted to commit crimes would come to the site to learn how. Then I'd give them a scheme with just enough holes in it so that only I could solve it. Of course, most of the schemes had to work or else no one would tell others about the site. Most of them were small things. Cheating on a quiz, kids hiding a broken face. But the big schemes, those I set up so I could solve them myself. And I could make sure they were exciting and splashy cases. And just like that, Mimi Mystery was back in business. But just when things were starting to look good, my family moved to MacGuffin because of my dad's work. And I got scared again about starting over, about being a nobody again. I had to make sure that wouldn't happen. I had to spread the word about my website here. So I researched to see who could best do that. Sting Conway was the obvious master of fraud. So I anonymously sent him instructions to get to my site. And he used it quite a number of times. But then, someone was beating me to the punch in solving the cases I set up. It was you, Iris. We found your stolen toy just like we promised. I had just set up two big cases through the site for my first day at school, linking Booms burning a locker to Dominic stealing the class cash box. It would have been solving two big cases at once, so I had to find out about you before you took that away from me. Who is that? Why are they being so mean to her? I joined the school paper to get an edge over you, but you still solved the case first. Right then, I knew you were going to be a problem. So you set up all those cases Iris and I solved? Not all, but a lot of them. So it was you who gave Sting the idea to have a fake lab haunting. I discovered the secret room in the old Swifty factory while doing research on my Fleet Feet article for the paper. That's how I came up with the whole Fleetest ghost story and secret treasure idea for Sting. Also, around that time, 
I overheard Mr. Erdenlayer ranting about Wilson and Ashley wrecking the lab. So through the site, I told Sting to calm the two out of their money. I planned to expose Sting plus get Wilson and Ashley to confess to wrecking the lab. What about Miss Bunsen? Sting brought her in so he could blame her if he got caught. He replaced my ideas with her science tricks. But that wasn't the only unexpected thing to come out of that case. Sure, you guys beat me to my own case again, but then you also found out that Fleet Feet was a big fraud. Then you let me write about it in my article because Iris didn't want to draw attention to herself. Suddenly, I was somebody again. Local TV and newspapers were interviewing me. I became the star reporter of the school paper. I was now the investigative reporter. And all I had to do was follow you two around. I didn't even have to work to solve cases. Iris would do it and I could just take the glory since she didn't want it. Like during the club's war. I took charge of our booth so I could follow you guys and cover the story. So, if we helped you, why are you doing this to Iris now? Because then, Iris took it all away from me. When Iris' dad was framed and when her sister was kidnapped, I promised to my editor I'd have the scoop on it. Then after risking my life to help you guys through that, Iris wouldn't let me write about it. It's my life. I wanted to keep it, I know, private. I was tempted to just write the darn article, but I didn't have enough details and you wouldn't give them to me. My editor, Nisha, got so mad since she had promised the story to some local papers and websites. We had nothing to give them that they didn't already know. So I got stuck covering dull articles. And I knew that soon I'd be forgotten again. I had no choice but to come up with a new way to make a name for myself. No choice? So I created the Secret Sleuth blog. I had to use crimes from the school paper since I hadn't been answering my scheme site in a while. And not many were using it anymore. Then, just as I had built up a buzz about Secret Sleuth, and I was going to reveal myself as the writer. I'm telling you, Secret Sleuth has got to be Iris Abel. It does make sense. Hey, that wasn't my fault. I had to stop you from taking all the attention. So you decided to frame me. I checked my old scheme site, and among the few requests I answered, I chose to use Tugman's. I gave him an empty water bottle he had left at the cafeteria by secretly sending it to his clinic. Then, I told him via the site to plant it at the scene. How'd you plant the chemicals in my locker? You taught me how to pick locks. The thing is, I didn't think you'd actually find Tugman, much less record him talking to his bookies. It was you! You hit Iris at the warehouse and took her recording. I couldn't let you guys keep the proof against Dr. Tugman, but I left you the video of Shine showing his injuries fake. Let me guess, you want me to turn in Chris Shine for throwing the game, but then not go after Tugman. Because then you're going to catch Tugman. There are the detective skills I'm so jealous of. Why don't you want to turn and shine yourself? Whoever turns and shine will be hated by everyone in MacGuffin Plains. The world will hate Shine, but MacGuffin will hate me for ruining their hero just to clear my name. I have no problem with turning and shine, but I'll turn you in too. You can't prove I'm involved. <laughs> you do know I've got recording equipment all over this place. I know and I'll be erasing all of them while you're unconscious. What? Sorry, Danton. I got hold of your sneakers and put calothane in their smokescreen. You really shouldn't just leave them by your locker when you go for practice. I want you to know, Iris, that I know about your mom. I saw what was written about her in your records, 
If you want to keep that private, don't cross me. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Figure out the mystery? Let us know in the comments. Hey, maybe you can get one of them to help you, Danton, so you can leave me in peace. <laughs> uh, anyway, see what happens next. We have new episodes every week. Like and subscribe to keep updated. Or don't. Whatever. See you next time, guys.